After the horrifying bridge collapse in Baltimore, there are questions swirling around the world about bridge design and structural safety. A similar example of a bridge here in the GTA is the Burlington Skyway. Both bridges are similar lengths. Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge is about 2,570 meters. The Burlington Skyway just a bit shorter at 2,560 meters. Both are multi-lane highways carrying heavy loads of vehicular traffic daily. McMaster structural engineer Kan Kan Yang is an expert in bridge design, construction and upkeep. She says the Baltimore and Burlington bridge designs make them even more comparable with similar metal truss styles and a suspended deck for a highway. In terms of some similarities for the design process, all the considerations, all the force calculations will be uh, more or less similar. So I think the concerning part is not about this superstructure, it's like the upper part of this bridge, and it's more about the connections between the upper part and the vertical support, the column, the pier, and also how strong the column is designed to withstand this dynamic impact load introduced by the ship collisions. Another critical issue with bridge design is the distribution of load. In the Baltimore example, not enough structural redundancies were in place. When one column collapsed, there was a domino effect to the entire structure. So what structural redundancies are in place here in Burlington to protect this bridge from if one of those vertical columns goes down, the rest of the bridge stays up? When we say redundancy, that means if the part of the bridge system fails, the whole bridge will still be able to find other paths to redistribute the force. For example, if we take this bridge pier, this column as an example, they have two columns, right? They have the two columns, and then once the ship hits one of them, we are hoping, or very much hoping, the other one will still be able to hold up the vertical force. The Baltimore Bridge has piers or columns planted in the soil underwater, forming a critical part of its foundation. That mid-water foundational column is what was struck by the cargo ship on Tuesday, leading to the deadly bridge collapse. Back here in Burlington, the columns are anchored in dry land, meaning the threat of a collision with a ship is dramatically reduced. It's possible, like see if we have the flooding with the increased water level rise, or they just go really off track, and it's still possible to happen, but I was just for sure it's gonna be much lower than having the pier directly sitting in the water. So this bridge location would have been picked to have an area where the two sides of the shore are closer together to allow not to have that intermediary piece in the middle. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's, uh, it's about site selection, it's also about designing the whole superstructure, the upper part structural systems to achieve that, uh, uh, that, that, that long spine. Maintenance is another important element. Being constructed of steel in the 1970s, corrosion will be investigated to determine whether it could have also played a role in the Baltimore disaster. Engineers also will have um, uh, estimation about how this damage will compromise the load carrying capacities. Are you seeing any of those kind of maintenance issues with this bridge? Well, we have the uh, standard which is applied uniformly across the province to make sure all the bridges are their condition are, are seriously monitored. 